Hello YouTubers and welcome to yet another beer review with me Peter, the master of hot pets today reviewing another IPA for you guys. So this one guys is one that caught my eye because of a certain person who reviewed it. So <laughs> Rob aka Hopscene or Robscene reviewed this one and he talked about it in a comment he made on one of I think it might have been Treehouse reviews. Something like that. But he, the reason why I wanted to try this one is because it's made with a lot of different malts, giving mouthfeel, thinking, mouthfeel like Treehouse beer. So this one, guys, is from Tor, one of my favorite Danish breweries, and this is their Insane in the Grain IPA on 7.5% made with barley malts, wheat malt, oats malt, oats, and rye. So that's really cool. They call this a rustic IPA, and they use Simcoe and Amarillo hops in it to give it, like, you know, a classic kind of intense American style IPA hop flavor, but they use these grains to make, you know, spicy and sweet and full-bodied base to the beer. They're playing around with mouthfeel and they make a fun little saying on their website that this doesn't substitute your <laughs> whole grain intake, but let's say that it does that today for me. <laughs> but this should be interesting, 7.5% as I said, hopefully it's a fresh bottle. Uh, I noticed it a while ago locally, so I'm crossing my fingers. Sometimes beers end up sitting at the shelves for a while. It, I mean, it's still good best before date wise. It says the 13th of January 2017, so maybe it's a fresh bottle. Who knows? We'll find out in a second, so let's get it cracked and poured. So I got it poured, and wow, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's a lot of floaties in the glass. <laughs> Gunks, and it's yeast gunks sitting on the bottom of the bottle. Sometimes I think that might be a sign that this is, a, well, it's of course bottle, condi bottle conditioned beer, but one that might have sit, sat on the shelf for a while. But it, it, it doesn't really look like the treehouse beers, and like now the, the Fever beers or Fable beers from Brewski I've reviewed, because they have that super hazy thing going too, but it's definitely a nice hazy orange color. It looks like, like an American West Coast IPA, uh, and a really thick rich almost as they say on their website stout like head three fingers creamy looking pillowy let's check out the aroma on this bad boy mm, but it smells nice it's, it's not super intense right now that might be the head that's in the way but what i am getting is definitely simcoe simcoe it's, it's got that classic dankness it really smells like a west coast ipa uh it's got the dankness that kind of the grapefruity, kind of pineapple-y, intense, sweet, uh, high alpha acidy, oily hot aroma, if you could say it like that. And Amarillo kind of plays in with some softer, uh, sweet citrus and orange flavors. I'm not really getting tropical, but it's mostly like really dank and um, you get grapefruit, sweet, I mean, it smells like classic kind of West Coast American IPA. And you're also getting somewhat of a spicy kind of rye quality to it. It smells really nice, actually. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. Oh, that is a dang tank. <laughs> that is classic American West Coast IPA, and it tastes like it's a fresh bottle, which is awesome. No tea leaf hop or anything. Maybe just a little on the back end, but I, I take it it's max like two, three months old. But interesting grain kind of flavor. It's quite effervescent. Um, you, you're getting like that slick mouthfeel you get from using oats and kind of wheat. But there's that spicy rye on the back end lingering with the bitterness. But yeah, it's mm, this is like a classic American West Coast IPA. A little more mouthfeel, but it's not like super chewy and creamy. A lot of people kind of, well, I don't know if they hate on it, but people are not super appreciative of West Coast IPA, or at least some when they start getting into the New England stuff, not just Treehouse, but New England, people are saying, oh, that's too dank and whatnot. But my heart still lies on the West Coast as well. I love the West Coast IPAs. That was what kind of got me into, you know, craft beer. Water. Just my trip, you know, San Diego, and traveling along in California and drinking amazing IPA. I still do enjoy the big punch in the face American style IPAs, big, bit bold bitterness. And like, it, it does have, you know, that kind of harsh biting hop flavor. But I still like it. I'm leaning more towards the new tropical ones, 
but I mean I still do really enjoy a nice well-made West Coast IPA and this certainly is. This is a well-made West Coast IPA with more mouthfeel, really nice spicy rye, a slick kind of mouthfeel, very coating, medium, slightly chewy, a little too effervescent maybe for the mouthfeel but still really nice tasting. Uh, grapefruit, sweet citrus, uh, there's a little bit of pine on the back end with that kind of dank, uh, Maybe not earthy. I was thinking earthy, but more like it's more like dank pine, uh, that evergreen tree sap thing. But also like the citrus fruits, lots of grapefruit, lots of sweet citrus, orange tangerines. Not really tropical. That was more of the pineapple on the aroma than the flavor. But it's still a really nice beer. So guys, rain wise for the total insane in the green. As I said, really classic, nice American West Coast IPA. It's a straight up ninety. It's really nice stuff. Worth a go for sure. Yeah, straight up 90 guys, I said for the total insane in the grain, tasty stuff. Let me know what you think of this bad boy if you tried it. Kind of thanks, I guess, as well to Rob from Hopstein for the recommendation and his review piquing my interest in this. And as always, guys, remember to come subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram, and let me know what you think of this bad boy if you've had it. And I'm gonna say cheers. See you guys in another video.